Okay, so in this problem, we're told a 920 kilogram sports car collides into the rear end of a 2300 kilogram SUV stopped at a red light. The bumpers lock and the brakes are locked, and the two cars skid forward 2.8 meters before stopping. The police officer, estimating the coefficient of kinetic friction between the tires and the road to be 0.8, calculates the speed of the sports car at impact. What was the speed? So, First thing we always want to do is draw what's going on and uh, try to understand it. So uh, we have this sports car with a mass of 920 kilograms. Uh, we know it's going to travel and then it's going to run into the back of this SUV with a mass of 2300 kilograms. And we know their bumpers are going to lock and they're going to basically skid forward a little bit. And then we know they're going to go 2.8 meters and then it's going to stop, right? And so we are also told the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.80. So uh, the thing that's going to cause them to stop after colliding is going to be the force of friction. So uh, we know the coefficient of kinetic friction of this force of friction is going to be 0.8. And so this is going to be a multi-step problem. Uh, we're going to use a couple rules. Uh, the first one we want to understand is the law of conservation of momentum, which basically tells us the momentum before has to be equal to the momentum after. So initial is final. So Essentially, there can be no loss in momentum, right? The momentum must be conserved. Um, and so basically what this tells us, or what you need to know first, is the formula for momentum. So momentum is mass times velocity. And so what we're going to do is look at the momentum before and after the collision. And you'll see why we're doing that in a second. Uh, but yeah, so uh, looking at the momentum before, uh, we're going to have two objects, the sports car and the... Um, SUV. And so if we want to add up their momentum before, we can call it M, we'll just say M1 V1 plus M2 V2, where V1 is the velocity of our sports car and the mass of the sports car. Uh, and then this corresponds to the SUV. So uh, we're just adding up the momentum before. And then the momentum after, uh, notice that there, it says that the bumpers lock, meaning they're going to become one object at this point. Therefore, their mass or the momentum now is just going to be for one object instead of having to add them up. So this can just be M1 plus M2 times, uh, we'll just call it V in this case. And so uh, another thing you should notice is that beforehand, the car is moving with some velocity V1, but we know that the SUV is at rest. So this V2 value, which is the velocity of the uh, SUV before the collision, is just zero. So if this value is zero, this really whole term is zero. So this basically tells us M1 V1 is equal to M1 plus M2 multiplied by V. So if we want to find V1, right, let me just do this. If we want to find uh, V1 or the velocity of the sports car before the collision. We're going to need the, um, right, we know the masses. So we're going to need the velocity of our uh, car, right, of our, uh, like they're going to be combined. So we need their velocity at, right before or right during the collision, right when it happens, right, they're going to have some velocity. And we're going to need to find that in order to find V1. So that's why I wanted to show you that first. And now I'll show you how to solve for V. So the way we solve for V is we're going to use the work energy theorem, which basically tells us the net work done is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. So uh, for this, you need to know two formulas. First one, for kinetic energy, which equals 1 half mv squared. And then the other is the formula for work, which is force times distance times the cosine of theta. So what we're going to do for this is notice that v is, uh, we're trying to solve for v here. So we're going to be able to solve for the v term of this kinetic energy when we set these two formulas equal to each other. And uh, that's why we're do, uh, doing this, to get that V to plug in there. So starting off with the change in the kinetic energy. So if we want to find the change in the kinetic energy, it would be equal to 1 half MV final squared minus 1 half MV initial squared. Uh, this works because mass and 1 half are just constants. So the only thing changing in this term is the velocity. So to get the change in it, you just do V final minus V initial. So the way we're setting this interval to B is V initial is going to be the speed right at the collision. So 
basically what that is is this v right here so v initial corresponds to this v right because we set this v to be the velocity right after the collision and so uh, what we're setting this is the velocity right after the collision to where it stops so v final is where it stops v initial is right after it so basically uh notice that uh v final is actually going to be zero so in this case the change in the kinetic energy is just minus one half mv initial squared and uh also uh yeah so v final is going to be zero because it's the at the end and then v initial is just this v another thing you should notice is that this m is the mass of both of the cars because at this point they're combined right because at the point we're doing this problem they're locked so we know that their masses are going to be combined when I'm referring to this M. So just keep that in mind. Next, what we want to do is look at the network, right? We found uh, the change in the kinetic energy, which is this, but we need the network done. So the way you find the network is by looking at all the forces acting on it. In this case, we only have the force of friction that's going to be acting on it. And this should make sense. The network done is going to be or the energy we have is going to be dissipated due to some force in this case it's going to be the force of friction which is the only force acting on it in this case in this direction at least uh, but yeah so the net work done is really just the force of friction or the work due to the force of friction so hopefully that makes sense uh, but basically uh, we know the force of friction or work is fd cosine of theta but in this case we're dealing with the work due to the force of friction so it's force of friction times the distance times the cosine of theta. Okay, cool. Uh, and now we need to find the force of friction. You should know the formula for it is mu sub k times f sub n. Uh, so what we need to find is the normal force now. Uh, you should know, since we're pretty far in physics, that we have the gravity acting this way and the normal force acting this way. Keep in mind, when I'm drawing this, I'm referring to both of them at this point in time, not just this, but I'm just doing it over here to make it simpler uh, but it should be obvious that the normal force is just equal to uh, the force due to gravity since they're the only two forces in the y and they have to cancel each other out in order for uh, us not to move in the y direction uh, but yeah so basically you should just know intuitively that f sub n is mg so if we're finding the net work it's mu sub k times mg multiplied by the distance times the cosine of theta. So uh, now we've basically got this. Uh, what I'm going to do now is actually plug in the numbers. So looking at mu sub k, they tell us is 0.8, right? The officer is going to estimate that. We know the mass is them added up, right? M is the mass of the two, right? Because the force of friction is acting on it when they're combined. So 2300 plus 920 is... Uh, I believe it's 3220. Let me check that. Uh, yeah, so 3220. Let's write that there. Uh, and then you should know that the force or G is just the acceleration due to gravity, which is just a constant value. So you should just know it's 9.8. Uh, so let's write that now times d, which is the distance for how long basically the force is going to act. We know it's acting over this 2.8 meter period because that's when they first hit, basically, or how far it moves during that time. So this is 2.8. Uh, and then the cosine of theta. So let me explain what theta is now. So theta is essentially the angle between the direction that the object or whatever you're dealing with is traveling. In this case, it's our car. We know it's going to be traveling to the right this way. And then the, uh, the angle between that and the force, or the direction the force is acting. So notice our force is the force of friction. It acts this way. Uh, and then the direction it's traveling is this way. So you can imagine that the angle is like this. And so this angle would be 180 degrees. So if they act opposite to each other, the angle between them is 180 degrees like this. So you can just see that. Um, and so you should know that the cosine of our angle theta which is 180, cosine of 180 is just negative 1. So all it really does is make this value negative. So, uh, yeah, let me just leave it like this, actually. 
but essentially it's just going to make this value negative. So uh, yeah, so we have minus 0 0.8 times 3220 times 9.8 times 2.8. So this is our network uh, done right by the force of friction, which is equal to this change in kinetic energy here. So this is equal to minus one half mv initial squared. Uh, I'm actually going to write out the values for this, so let me do that. So the mass in this case, keep in mind, as I said before, this m is dealing with um, when they're combined. So the mass is 3220. Uh, and then you just have the initial velocity squared. OK, cool. So uh, some things you should notice, the negatives are going to cancel. Your mass on this is equal on the same side, so uh, those can cancel out. So you have 0.8 times 9.8 times 2.8 equals 1 half v initial squared. To solve for v initial or get it by itself, uh, you multiply both sides by 2. And then to get rid of the square, you would just square root both sides. So we basically have v initial equals the square root of 2 times 0 0.8 times 9.8 times 2.8. Plugging this in, so you have 2 times 0 0.8 times 9.8 times 2.8 you get 6.626. Now keep in mind, this isn't your answer. So this is the initial velocity uh, right when they combine. But notice we have to plug it back into this formula. As I said before, this V initial here was equal to this V. So uh, yeah, to solve for the initial V1, which was the velocity of our sports car before the collision, uh, we have to plug that in. So M1 plus M2 is 3220, right? We've already agreed on that. Just adding these two up divided by m1 which is 920 and then multiplying by v which we just found so that is 6.626 let's write that there now let me plug this in so 3220 divided by 920 times 6.626 and you will get v1 is 23.191 so uh, about 23 meters per second you can round however you'd like i'm going to leave it like this but essentially your velocity here uh, is going to be 23 meters per second uh but yeah so 23 meters per second they're asking for the speed of the sports car at impact so that's this value uh just a quick rundown of what we did we used the law of conservation of momentum to uh get them in terms of v1 which was our velocity of our sports car and v the velocity right after impact and then we basically use the net wor uh, or the work energy theorem uh, to solve for that v to plug it back in and uh yeah so uh this is going to be your answer and uh hopefully you found this uh video useful